Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. My name is Brian. We welcome you to St. Pius X's Parish family. In order to preserve the dignity of the Eucharist that we're about to celebrate, please take a moment to silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. In the spirit of Christian fellowship, please turn to those near you, maybe someone you do not know yet, or someone alone, and extend a warm welcome. Today is the first Sunday of Lent. Today's Gospel is often titled, The Temptation of Jesus. Lent begins with a reflection on the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. The Church assigns temptation stories to the beginning of Lent because temptations come to everyone, not only to Jesus, and we seem almost genetically programmed to yield to them. The celebrant for our liturgy is Father Valentine, assisted by Deacon John. The Mass is being offered for Phil and Gail the Pret wedding anniversary, Gavin Russell, John Nigro, birthday remembrance, Richard Lowe, living, and Frank Sayer. May we rise, please. Saying, 
The priest shall receive the basket from you and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders, and bringing us into this country. He gave us the land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. And having said them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for forty days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whoever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Every year at this time, when we start our Catholic Ministers of Fear, uh, I usually I show the video. Uh, it's practically a bit of the same stuff. So just want to summarize as we start our Catholic Ministers of Fear. We begin our 2022 Catholic Ministries campaign this weekend. I'm grateful to Claire Crossley for inviting us to consider what might be your and my response this year? You have consistently been very generous and enable us to meet our goal. And I want to thank you for that. Our goal this year is the 47,300. As you know, in addition to supporting the mission of the church beyond St. Pius X, when we meet our goal, the parish receives a rebate. Last year we received $13,075 and we utilized that money to repay our entrance and replace the sidewalk and steps around the church. So far nobody has fallen down. That's good. <laughs> we are hoping to reach our goal this year and receive a rebate from the 2022 appeal. And that money is targeted to upgrade the restrooms in the school building which houses the ACDS program, program for the Down Syndrome. May I again please call on your generous and your help as soon as possible so that we can get this needed project going. So once again, I want to thank you all. Ashwin is uh, just amazing. We must have had nearly 2,500 people must have come to our church. People came for the Masses, participated in the Masses. Our EMs were generous with their time. Throughout the day, they were giving out the ashes. And when we part of the pocket packets, we have to take home the ashes. We nearly gave out about 3,500, sorry, 3,500, uh, those little packets we gave. And people were very pleased. And I took a little uh, collection for the Ukrainian people, and we collected nearly $3,000, so it was uh, overwhelming. I'm going to send that money to the Ukrainian church and they will send it to Ukraine. So, as you are contributed, please continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. And this afternoon we have a young lady, her name is Nelly.
She's sitting down with uh, Virginia. So, Navy, please rise. We'd like to welcome Mary. She's a new parishioner in the parish. That's Mary. She's very young, 16 years old. <laughs> And there's a young lad uh, from Shaminad. Uh, he was just going to graduate. They found a tumor in his brain and just like it quickly went. Uh, so his finger was there this week. So keep uh, Gavin rustling your prayers. Also another parishioner, one of the another parish. I saw another lady over here. She just lost her husband in July. So keep Frank Saya in your prayers. Let us begin with the real. What has a verse but does not speak? Anybody has any idea? What has a verse but does not speak? Peter? Dictionary. A book. <laughs> what are the words but no one reads? The terms and condition, usually in a small print. Maybe they don't want us to read it. It is also said that the actions speak louder than words. Of course, we presume that those are edifying actions. Yet for those of us who are drivers, we also know that on the road, some hand gestures done with the finger can mean very impolite words. And Peter does all the time. <laughs> what are the words but no one wants to hear? An angry person. The tongue has no bones, but it can break the heart. And the tongue of an angry person can cause a heart attack to the one who is listening and maybe even to the one using it. The tendency is that we use bad words to express our anger and bitter feelings. And there are some days the supply of available swear words are insufficient, inefficient to meet our demands. Oh yes, we have those kind of days. But bad moods, volatile emotions are never reason to curse and use cruel words. And even if we relate it later, we cannot simply brush it off with, I did not mean what I said. No, we meant what we said. Just that at that moment, we could not control it. And we let it fly off our mouth before testing those words. The problem is that we will never know how long our words will stay in the someone's heart. Even long after we have forgotten that we have said them. Whether for better, or for worse. Only from this, we are reminded of the lessons of life, one of which is that we must control our tongue when our heart is bitter. Certainly, silence is better than angry words. And also, angry words are spoken with a raised voice. But instead of raising our voice, voice let us raise our words. It is the rain that grows flowers. Not the thunder, but words, whether kind or otherwise, are just expression from a source. The source of our words is none other than our heart. And that's why Jesus said in today's gospel passage that man's words flow out from what fills his heart. That's why words can heal or hurt. It is from one heart to another. Only a heart that can heal another heart and a heart that can break another heart with words that flow from the heart. As Jesus said, a good man draws what is good from the goodness of his heart. A bad man draws what is bad from the store of badness from his heart. And the story of two altar servers. Two altar servers live in a two different cities, serving in a different church. But both of them wanted to become priests. Both of them had an exact same experience. One of the servers was late for mass. Because he was in a hurry to do everything he needed to do, he accidentally knocked the chalice that contained the wine. 
After the mass, the priest called the boy and shouted, Get out of here! You will never serve as an altar server again. At another church, the altar server was also late for mass, and he too knocked the chalice that contained the wine, spilling it on the floor. After the mass, the priest called the altar server and said, It's all right. You will do better next time. You will be fine priest for Sunday. You will find out you will be a fine priest for God someday. Thirty years later, the second altar server became Archbishop Fulton Chin, one of the most loved religious leaders in America. And the other altar server, he became Joseph Tito, an atheist, the ruthless dictator of Yugoslavia. Words are powerful. They can heal or hurt. They can encourage or destroy. Every leader in polite and kind words, as well as impolite and hurtful words. And then what happens? A heart is like a sink trap. All the polite and kind words get drained away quickly. And what's left? In the same trap are the remnants. And in this case, the impolite and hurtful words. Much of those remnants in the same trap are to be forgotten, read off. Some we take them stay there, right in our hearts. And of course, those things that don't do any good to our hearts. Today, Jesus talks about what is stored in our hearts. He reminds us that our hearts are created to be good because our hearts are created by God. Jesus wants to clean our hearts of all that rubbish that is caught in the sin trap of our hearts. Jesus wants to clean and heal our hearts and make it store of goodness. He wants to make our hearts like His. There are many ways that we can let Him clean our hearts, especially during this season of Lent. One way is through prayer. Another can through the devo devotion to the sacred heart. Just as a heart can break another heart, so to a heart can also heal another heart. Our Lord wants to clean and heal our hearts with His blood and cleansing water that flows from His side, from His heart. Let's prepare our hearts to be cleansed and healed to the devotion of the sacred heart to atonement reparation. May we let Jesus fill our hearts with his love, so that from what fills our hearts, our mouths will give thanks and praise and proclaim the good news of God's love to others, especially during this time, difficult time, as we all see on the news print media that breaks our hearts. Let us carry good God's good words. Don't fall in trap. Jesus overcame with those temptation. And we also can too. Amen. Amen.
we too take the time to look into our own life values and our relationship with God our Father. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. Today's gospel reminds us that we are all tempted to do wrong from time to time. We pray that we, like Jesus, have the strength to resist temptation and to always do what is right by ourselves and by our neighbors. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, loving Father, we pray for the people of Ukraine, for those suffering or afraid, for the wounded and the refugees, that you will be close to them and protect them. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for world leaders, that compassion, strength, and wisdom guide them in their decision-making. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that those carrying out this brutal war recognize that the use of military force is not conducive to dialogue and peace, but endangers innocent human life, the dignity of the human person, and the safety of all those caught up in this conflict. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the catechumens of our parish and the whole church, namely Carla Rampasad, Alima Bishan, Melissa Thiel, and Andrew Cahane, Daniel Caton, who are preparing for baptism, and for those children preparing for baptism, First Communion, and confirmation in your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering or recovering from sickness, surgery, and addiction, mental illness, including Charlie Justin, Justin, Karen Petrus, Mary Ellen Phelan, Lorraine Salvucci, Rosemary Burke, John Dashiska, Father Ignace, McWan, Genero Izo, and for those who have died recently, and for all who mourn, especially Michael Stera, Gavin Russell, Joseph Zawal, Richard Pryor, Frank Sayer, and for the intentions of each one of us here. And this mass being offered for Phil and Gail Delpret, wedding anniversary, Joseph Zawal, John Niagara, birthday remembrance, Richard Law, and Frank Sayer. In your mercy, Lord God. Let's look upon this praise as we listen to Heavenly Mother, the Queen of Peace. Help me, O praise the Lord is with thee. Most of God amongst women. Blessed is the Lord of Jesus. Holy name of God, and for our sins and We pray, Lord, that these are prayers. Join with those of people around the world. Help guide those waging war to end this meaningless sufferings and restore peace. We make this prayer to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God your mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands to the praise and glory of His name. Our good and good of all the church. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings of bread and wine. For we then we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. We are just praying in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We stood right and trust our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40, day, 40 long days from earthly food, we consecrated through His past the pattern of our lengthened observers, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast, and to the company with angels and the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we all agree.
John, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and these are the remembering Joseph, Zabol, John, Niagara, on his birthday remembrance, Frank, Sam, Michael, Spera, Gavin, Russell, Richard, Prado, and all the victims of war, terrorism, and city disasters, and all the way of mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that in the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Mother of the Church, with Blessed Joseph, our most just fathers, with the Blessed Apostle, including St. Pastor and our patron saint, St. Agnes, Father Pio, St. Teresa of Catholic St. Francis, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be coerced into eternal life, and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we live in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father forever, Amen.
Today's special collection will be taken for the church in need in Ukraine. This money is collected will be directed to assist the people of Ukraine during this time of suffering and war. Next weekend collection is for the Vincent de Paul Society. Thank you for support and generosity. Each Friday during late at 7 p.m., various parish ministers will lead to the stations across. I hope you will join us. Bible classes, Sister Rosemary Trainer will be starting from this Sunday at 1 p.m. in the school building room number one. So after the 12 o'clock mass, we can come to room number one. We'll have a coffee, tea, and a discussion with the, what we heard in the church. We still have a couple of black books at the back of the church. Please take them and uh, use them during the Lenten journey and enrich your spiritual life. This year, an annual Socks of Love project will serve the homeless of Long Island will be undertaken by our 7th, 8th, 8th grade faith formation youth as a part of their confirmation retreat. Travel site all retreats and socks are needed. Please check the bulletin where you can order from Amazon wish list. Our annual Lenten Soup Supper will be held on Sunday, March 27th at 6 p.m. in Madara Hall. We hope you will join us in our program. We will make mistakes instead of 27th or 26th, so sorry for that. Knights of Columbus, St. Patrick's and St. Joseph's party celebration will be Saturday, March 12th at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. in Madonna Hall. We are giving you two months all advance notice make a Lincoln commitment to help save a life. There is a money shortage of blood available in our blood banks. The St. Patrick's and Blood Rally will be held on Good Friday, April 15th from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. in Madonna Hall. Help us reach our parish goal of 100 points. Please consider donating in case the legend are to save a couple of lives. And our 28th annual St. Patrick's Golf Outing will be on Monday, June 20th. More details you'll find in today's parish bulletin. And please don't forget to spring forward and turn your clocks ahead on Sunday evening, March 12th. Otherwise, you're going to be late for the mass on Sunday. Don't let me for that. And please don't forget to take a copy of the parish bulletin as you leave the church or log into our parish website or parish app. That's all we have. Please stand for our concluding prayer. Let's